Joining us now is South Carolina Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy. Congressman, thank you for being here with us yes, in Washington in studio. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. Um, I want to dive right into the topic of the moment, and that is this memo. The president said it totally vindicates him and that this Russia probe is all just a witch hunt. Is he right? I would say this. I'm sure the president is frustrated. Uh, you know, Adam Schiff prejudged the investigation before we interviewed the first witness. Um, so I, I'm sure that that instructs some of what he said. I, I actually don't think it has any impact on the Russia probe for this reason. The memo has no impact on the Russia probe. No, not, not to me it doesn't, and I was pretty integrally involved in the drafting of it. Uh, there is a Russia investigation without a dossier. So to the extent the memo deals with the dossier and the FISA process, the dossier has nothing to do with the meeting at Trump Tower. The dossier has nothing to do with an email sent by Cambridge Analytica. The dossier really has nothing to do with George Papadopoulos' meeting in Great Britain. Um, it also doesn't have anything to do with obstruction of justice. So there's going to be a Russia probe even without a dossier. And the dossier you're talking about is this uh, collection of political opposition research put together by someone named Christopher Steele, who yes, uh, was a former British intelligence agent. And, and that is spoken about at length in this memo. Um, and we'll get back to that in a moment. But more broadly, uh, Speaker Ryan says that the memo that you helped put together here does not threaten the credibility of the FBI. The president has very different views and says it does. Where do you stand? I don't think there's a bigger supporter of the FBI in Congress um, than me and those of us who work with him in a previous life. Um, I have tremendous respect for the Bureau. There are 30,000 employees. Um, let's assume that there are five that uh, engaged in conduct that we have questions about. Five. That leaves a lot. That, <laughs> that leaves a lot that are doing exactly are what we want them to do. Are these five individuals named in the memo that you helped publish? Uh, I think two of them would be. Um, people can quibble about Andy McCabe. Um, I spent, I guess, close to 15 hours with Andy McCabe in two different interview sections. I found him to be a professional witness, even though I disagree with some of the decisions he made. And I think we got to get to the some point in life where you can disagree with the decision-making process that someone engaged in without believing that they are corrupt or somehow uh, part of the deep state, whatever that means. This is the, the deputy director of the FBI who now is Former. retiring. Yes, yes. Uh, or being asked to leave perhaps earlier than he had planned. But when it comes to the, the Department of Justice and the FBI now that the president is raising questions about, these individuals were handpicked by, by him uh, and he's critical of them. Do you think that there need to be changes there? Um, I think the folks that he picked, Chris Ray and Rod Rosenstein, can effectuate those changes. Uh, Rod Rosenstein is a former United States attorney. And again, I, I have differences with the way that they discharge their responsibilities. But there's, there's, a, there's a wide gulf between me having differences from somebody and think that they should lose their job. I, I'm really impressed with Chris Ray. Uh, so impressed that I, I advocated to Chairman Nunes that he take last Sunday and show him the memo. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I that did not to, happen. It did. He, he, Chris saw it. Chris got to see it Sunday, and then Monday they got to point out what they thought to be factual and ina inaccuracies. Um, to Chris's defense, he didn't want the memo to come out. Um, and again, under the heading "Reasonable Minds Can Differ," I have a lot of respect for him. He's speaking up for his agency. But Congress is the one who created FISA. In fact, Congress created the FBI. So there's going to be good, good branch tension. Um, it doesn't mean someone should lose their job. It doesn't mean they're corrupt. But it also doesn't mean Congress is not legitimate in asking these questions, because I think we are. Rod Rosenstein, the, the deputy attorney general that you referenced there, is also publicly disclosed in this memo as someone who helped sign off on this surveillance warrant, uh, the FISA process that you referenced there. Do you have confidence in him? Should he keep his job? I have confidence in him. Um, I, I didn't the president wavered on that. When I didn't he get was to pick him. Um, and the president, I've actually never met President Trump, never had a conversation with him, and he certainly should not ask my hiring advice. He's got smarter people around him than me. Um, I want prosecutors who are objective, independent, uh, and I didn't say perfect, because no one is perfect. Uh, people exercise their discretion incorrectly all the time. Um, I've had my differences with Rod Rosenstein, um, and I still think that he is fully capable of, of helping run a Justice Department that we can all have confidence in. I'm actually really impressed with Chris Ray, and I say that um, even though we are on totally opposite sides of this issue, and, and probably will always be. He doesn't think the memo should have mm -hmm. been publicly disseminated. 
Um, I have real questions about the process that the Bureau went through in 2016, um, but I also think he's the person to, to, to lead the Bureau. I think he's doing a good job. Well, the FBI was gravely concerned that there was information missing from this memo, that it actually uh, was dangerous in setting a precedent in terms of disclosing classified information, and it could actually hurt future intelligence efforts. How do you respond to that and to Chris Ray? Um, difficult facts make for really bad precedent. Um, I hope this is a one-off. I hope it is a one-off that Congress takes this position, but I also hope it's a one-off that a FISA application contains um, errors and, and, uh, and product that is funded by a political opponent. I hope that's a one-off. So That's the Steele dossier that you are pointing to there. But, but, but it's both the Steele dossier and who paid for it and whether or not it was vetted, but it's also what was not in. This is an application to a court. So I get that Adam Schiff and others are worried about what's not in my memo. Mm -hmm. I wish that they were equally concerned about what's not in the FISA application which is a lot of really important information about the source and his subsources uh, and the fact that he was hired by the DNC and the, and the Clinton campaign and the fact that he was biased against President Trump. That is all information that the, f that the finder of fact is entitled to. Now, we should dig into this because you are, from my understanding, the only Republican investigator on the House Intelligence Committee who actually viewed the FISA applications, everything that went into essentially putting together this memo. So w when you're talking about this Steele memo, you are not saying that it was the sole piece of evidence used to justify these four authorizations of the surveillance warrant, are you? No. Um, it was not the exclusive information relied upon by, uh, by the FISA court. Would it, it have been authorized were it not for that dossier? No, it would not have been. Um, and How and can you say that? Because it was authorized four times by separate judges. Right, right? and the information was in there all four times. Mm -hmm. uh, and the judge doesn't do independent research. So it's, it's up to the Department of Justice to tell the judge, by the way, we have learned that Chris Steele uh, told Bruce Orr that he would do anything to keep President Trump from winning. By the way, we need to let you know Chris Steele's been dismissed as a source for the FBI. There are three Republicans that have seen every bit of information, three of us, Bob Goodlatte, the chairman of the judiciary, mm -hmm. Johnny Radcliffe, who was a former terrorism prosecutor and U.S. attorney in Texas, and me. All three of us have total confidence in the FBI and DOJ to be able to do the jobs that they have been assigned. We have confidence in Bob Mueller and we have serious consideration, serious concerns about this process. So we have all three of those things in common, including being concerned about what, what happened in 2016. Should all the information in the FISA applications be publicly disclosed, declassified, so that people can make their own judgment and see what you've seen? Um, I, I think um, I'm going to defer a little bit to the Bureau and DOJ on um, it's a long application. If there are sources and methods that are, are not already known mm -hmm. that they think would jeopardize national security, I would, um, I would defer to their judgment. The source that we revealed, uh, Chris Steele, was about the least well-kept secret in America. Mm -hmm. So I, I, generally, I, I err on the side of transparency and disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, uh, there's a reason that this process um, is usually confidential, and, uh, and I don't want to set the precedent of all FISA applications being publicly seen. Well, that's the concern in doing this memo, that you have set a new precedent. Um, I, I, I would argue that it's also um, somewhat unprecedented to rely on political opposition research to um, instruct and um, inform an application, and it's really... Uh, bad precedent and unprecedented uh, to not tell a court that a source has this level of bias. I mean, look, look at just the disclosure of who paid for it. They could have easily said it was the DNC and, and Hillary Clinton. That would have been really easy. I read the footnote. I, I know exactly what the footnote says. It took longer to explain it the way they did than if they just come right out and said, Hillary Clinton for America and DNC paid for it. But so, they didn't do that. But short of that disclosure, you still would have believed this FISA surveillance warrant was justified? I mean, it, your, your problem is in the disclosure within the application, but the surveillance itself of this American Carter Page was named in your memo, uh, who was at one point a Trump campaign associate. Uh, was that justified, that surveillance? Um, We'll never know um, because the, the application contained three parts. It became, uh, it, 
uh, included the dossier. Mm -hmm. uh, it included uh, reference to a newspaper article, which, by the way, no court in America considers a newspaper article to be evidence. And it included other information they had on Carter Page. So what I would say to the FBI and DOJ is if you had enough on Carter Page with just him, why did you include something that the National Enquirer might not run? And why did you cite a newspaper article when there's no court in America that allows a newspaper article to be considered as evidence? If you had enough without it, why did you use it? That would be my question to them. Were the judges political? Four times this was approved. No, I, 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 the judges are only as good as what's put in front of them. Judges don't do independent research. So you're looking at but this a isn't, stack of this paper. This is an extensive process from, right. from what I'm told. I mean, this isn't just something people sign off on quickly. It's you know, a sizable application with, as you said, multi-part information that's submitted. But that's were the judges for, not doing their jobs? No, I think they were. I mean, ju judges sign Title III applications all the time. They sign search warrants. They sign arrest warrants. Uh, there's a reason the affiant swears to the truthfulness of the underlying information. Judges can't then go research and say, well, gosh, I wonder if Chris Steele knew this all himself, or I wonder if he was relying on hearsay from subsources in Russia. That's not the judge's job. It is the FBI and DOJ's job to present full, credible information to the court. So I, you, I, I don't, look, If I'll never miss a chance to blame judges if I can, because I was a former litigator. Mm. There's nothing judges can do about information that's not presented to them. And the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, if the president makes any move to dismiss him, he failed to express confidence in him the other day, would that concern you? Um, it would. Again, I'm not in the Senate. I don't have advice and consent, uh, and the president has not sought my count. But you don't think this. he should be fired based on what you've seen? I, I, I don't. I, I think um, it is fair to ask uh, the deputy attorney general, um, what did you know at the time you signed one of the applications? I think it is fair to ask, what Pfizer reforms are you going to uh, implement to make sure we don't have this fact pattern come up again? Um, I don't judge people based on um, a single decision that they make throughout uh, the course of an otherwise really stellar career. I want to ask you about one of the criticisms that's coming from Democrats here because they, there was a lot of hubbub. Should the memo come out? Should it not? When it did, in reading it, Democrats said that the content actually undercuts some of the argument that you're making here uh, because it confirms that the Russia probe was already underway in advance of these FISA uh, warrant applications and that it pointed all the way back to uh, July 2016 when George Papadopoulos uh, was named there, a former Trump foreign policy aide who has since pled guilty and is now a cooperating witness in the special counsel's probe. So how do you respond to that, that you've actually hurt your own argument? Well, I'm actually in a really small group, I think, of Republicans uh, that think that this FISA process uh, is suspect and wrong and should not have taken place but you still have a Russia investigation even without it. So um, I don't know how many other Republicans feel that way. I, I am on record as saying I support Bob Mueller 100%. I think you would have a Russia invest. Look, Russia tried to interfere with our election in 2016 with or without a dossier. So you need an investigation into Russia. You need an investigation into Trump Tower and the Cambridge Analytica email separate and apart from the dossier. So. Th those are not connected issues to me. They may be for other Republicans, but they're not for me. I say investigate everything Russia did, but admit that this was a really sloppy process that you engaged in to surveil a U.S. citizen. So your concern is a process-driven one, not questioning the probe that the president continues to call a witch hunt, because he is taking this evidence as he's saying, you know, clearing the decks and, and saying that, you know, in the court of public opinion, he should already be decided as not guilty of collusion. Well, I, that, that's a little bit separate issue. Um, I, you know, we're not through with the investigation, so I'm not going to prejudge the outcome of it. Um, I have seen no evidence of collusion between President Trump and the Russians or his campaign in the mm -hmm. Russian. We're not through investigating. But I would ask my fellow citizens, keep these three things uh, disconnected. Bob Mueller is looking into what Russia did in 2016 and potential criminality as evidenced by the Papadopoulos plea and the F Flynn plea. Congress is looking into what Russia did in 2016, but oh, by the way, it's also, you can do that and also be critical mm -hmm. of the use of the dossier and, and the failure to tell the, the, the FISA court um, all relevant material facts. You can do all three, um, and, and that's where I am. 
Uh, now, your committee, the House Intelligence Committee, has said they have a second memo planned for release, this time about the State Department. What can you tell us about that? Uh, that that's news to me. You didn't have a role in creating this memo. I don't think there is a memo about the State Department. The way I, I talk, Chairman to, Nunes has said that publicly. I think what I, th I think what Devin said is there's a phase two of the investigation, um, and there is um, uh, we do have concerns with a certain aspect of State Department involvement, um, and um, I have serious concerns about it. Uh, it's not been public yet, so I, I I think what Chairman Nunes meant is there's. There's another aspect to the investigation, but if there's a second memo, um, I don't know about it. I want to ask you about the other big news of the week that, that you made. Uh, you surprised <laughs> Washington with announcing your retirement, that you're not going to run for Congress. Why did you decide to leave? You know, I'm just, I, I, I enjoy the justice system more. I enjoy being fair. Um, I enjoy the pursuit of fairness uh, as a virtue, and um, I'm just more comfortable in that system. Um, my wife hates it when I say this, but I, I was a pretty good prosecutor, I think, uh, but I've been a pretty lousy politician. So I've done it for seven years. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to do it, but it's time for me to, uh, whatever time I got left, I want to spend it in the justice system because that's where my heart is. And, um, Why do you and that's say you're a lousy interest. politician? I just, I, I see um, multiple sides of a single issue. Um, and the fact that someone disagrees with me um, does not make me challenge uh, their love of the country. It doesn't make me believe that they're corrupt. Um, I, I've got a lot of friends on the other side of the aisle. We disagree on this issue, but um, but I don't question their love for the country, and I don't. I, I just I don't think the end justifies the means. I think the manner in which we get places matters, and in politics, too often winning is the only thing that matters. And Look, every hero I have is lost, every one of them. So losing is not the worst thing in the world. Not knowing what you believe and not caring enough about it to fight for it, that's the worst thing in the world. Has President Trump changed Washington? Um, yeah, I think he, um, look, he beat a really crowded field of qualified people for the, for the nomination, and he won an election that no one thought he would win. But He's, that's not a factor in your calculus. I have never met or talked to President Trump. I haven't talked to Mike Pence, even though we served together. I was thinking of doing this two years ago and Tim Scott talked me out of it. Yeah. I just, um, Tim tried this time, but, but my wife won. So it's got nothing to do with, uh, like I think we're gonna hold the house. Uh, there's some chairmanships open. If you really like being in Congress, this is a great time to be there. Mm -hmm. I would just rather be in the justice system. Do you wanna be a federal judge? I did. Um, I don't anymore. Um, I, uh, so I told if you were my two asked, senators. You would well, say I was no. asked a couple of months ago, and I told Lindsey and Tim, "Thank you. I'm really grateful that most senators don't have great memories. Those two guys remembered <laughs> that I wanted to be a judge, and uh, and they would have advocated for me. But I, uh, I want to. Tim and I have written a book together. We teach a class together at Clemson. Um, I like the practice of law, and I'm going to be content doing some mixture of those three things. What do you need to achieve in Washington before you leave? Um, to have my Democrat colleagues say publicly what they texted to me the day they found out I was leaving. I would love us to get to the point where we're willing to say publicly what we feel about people privately. I mean, right now, I have to weigh and balance should I say that Tulsi Gabbard and Kirsten Sinema were the first two people to text me and said the nicest things when they heard that I was leaving because I don't want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. That's where we are in politics is, is can you say nice things about people with whom you disagree and not hurt them politically? And uh, I, I hope that changes. I hope we can disagree with one another um, and, and not challenge each other's motives. Do you think you served justice in your time in Congress? Uh, not like I did in my previous job. I tried. Um, it's about winning in politics, and um, that is not what the, the courtroom, there's a reason we throw out search warrants even though we find a murder weapon. There's mm -hmm. a reason we throw out con confessions even though we think the person did it. The process matters. The end does not justify the means, and in politics, it's just about winning, and, and I, I can't, I don't want to live like that.
Congressman, thank you for coming yes, on. Thank and you. Telling your story. Yes, ma'am. We'll be back in one minute.